Happy Monday, boys and girls. Welcome back to HSHQ. That is right. The squad is back for another week. It's a blank canvas. Let's tell stories. Let's paint Arsenal football pictures together. And look at this. One of my favourite Ruth Beck art pieces. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. It's a new week here at HSHQ. But the same faces, which I'm sure make you happy, especially this one, my podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. Squaddies, happy Monday. Monday madness is here. <laughs> and at ease and let's go. Let's go. Absolutely, let's go. Good evening, everyone in the house. Quick message from Taib. Stop defending Arteta. Mark's in the house. Good evening. Craig's here. Newman's here. Um, Jamela, Bl Jamela Blonde. Bond. Do you mean like Jamela as in like Jane Bond or is that what you mean? Listen, I, I, I bombed it up to LA today and bombed it back in time for you knuckleheads. And Al Carp, you're right. Get the likes up. Kev, how was your weekend? It was up and down, so I've got to say. It was up and down. Some, you know, a lot of it is obviously it revolves around football. And, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, uh, started off lovely. Didn't end up so well, but it's, that's the game of football. That's the game of life. Football is, is like that. And my, my team obviously got, got stuffed 4-0. And then my uh, adopted team got stuff free nil. But, but my son scored um, after 10, well, 12 months of anguish, heartache, pain, and re recuperation. Got back on the pitch and um, managed to get a goal, which was massive relief for him. And I got to meet. I told you last week about Hold my. Hold on, I was prepared for this. Oh right, I okay. Watched the, I watched the game, and I know like what this moment means and meant. And wow, it was a good goal as well, Soph. It was a good goal. Um, I mean, to see him. I don't know what's going on with the sun today, you guys, but bear with me. I, I might be doing the shades up and down. Anyway, no shade thrown, except super. Super shade thrown by Ty um, against Peterborough, Kev. It must have been wonderful to see him get that goal and see him back playing after all of his, uh, you know, battles back from injury. Yeah, and, and the problem was, Sophie, everybody was telling me what a good goal it was and I didn't even get to see it until later <laughs> on because, do you remember, we, I, I finished work with Astro, then we came straight on the pod and then I didn't see it until after that, but wow. Really good it was goal it was a great it was a great goal and you um yeah you that's that's the silver lining to the weekend but there's another silver lining yeah I mean my 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 nephew one of my nephew my many nephews who I've I don't really get to see because he lives far away I told you last week he was um it was his birthday last week and he plays for he plays for Cardiff and they were up playing Manchester United so my brother. Uh, his wife and Romani came up, and I got to I got to meet him Saturday morning early, and um, yeah, now what a I, lovely, lovely. Kid. I have a sneaky photo right here. Look at this! How do, cute! Uh, how do you get hold of this stuff? <laughs> I have connections. Kev. Yeah, you must have connections. Well, I'm on the inside. Must, that must be. Oh. That's with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> that my brother took that picture, so that's got to be from my brother. I mean, let's just say, you know, um, being associated with the Campbell family on Facebook, it has its advantages 
Right, and I always enough. ask for permission first. So, nice. Kev, how cute is he, though? What a little oh, stud. He's a, he's a diamond. Honestly, he is an absolute diamond. And, you know, so humble, so loving. And, um, you know, it was great to it was great to see him. Great to wish him well for the Manchester United, um, obviously, game with the academy, etc. And they, they ended up winning because they play a series of games and they accumulate the score at that age. And um, they ended up winning 10-9. So, you know, he had a great weekend. He got to see family. He got to see um, Tyrese and Kyle, the boys. Amazing. And everything. And uh, my, my auntie, my auntie Gwen, my godmother. Uh, we got to see quite a bit of the family who he's never seen before, which is always nice. And it could love it. You know what, Sophie? It puts things into perspective a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we were, yeah, we were hurting a bit after after Saturday. Of course we were, because we didn't want to get beat like that. We don't mind losing, but as you said, it's the way, isn't it? Yes. It's the way, it's the way you lose. And we we didn't want that to happen to us, but it did. And obviously we weren't. We weren't best pleased, me and you, were we? No. And we had, I think, our first heated exchange in a few weeks, um, which I understood where you were coming from after the game, and I know you understood where I was coming from. And, yeah. you know, the the thing for me, and here's the scoop, the theme of tonight's show is, is it okay? So my top five talking points are going to be addressed to you and the squaddies. Mm -hmm. And the theme is, is it okay? Because... Well, uh, well uh, uh, can I just say so? You can say whatever you want. You're super Kev, super uh, no, Kevin No, I, I think it's important to prepare for this. I watched I watched the game again. Mm -hmm. And I saw some things. I, I, I knew what was going on, but I saw some things I could be a bit more critical. From from what I saw, no, you don't okay. know what the, cri the the critical part is I'm just, yet. So I'm just. <laughs> but <By> the... <laughs> but let's see what the questions you give, and okay. then I could then then I could answer. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to kick off with them right now. So welcome everyone. Um, oops, save that draft. Lots going on today. Big meetings in La La Land. I'm back now. I've got my shit together. Here we go, people. Thanks for everyone for joining us again. Almost uh, 200 of you in live chat um, on a <laughs> on a Monday. Casey's malfunction. <laughs> well, not like your art, mate. <laughs> Sophie, I hope you threw your humble. Yes, actually, ask Kev about what I had prepped. Should I tell them, Kevin? No, no, don't tell them, no. Okay, no, all right, no, okay. No, all right, don't tell right. them. Okay, here we that's go. that's coming, that's still coming. It's still coming, um, it, it, exactly, not the like button. So tonight, tonight's theme is, is it okay? And I have five top talking points. So I'm gonna start off with my first one to Super Kevin, you guys, right? Is it okay to be disappointed losing to Liverpool? And I have a caveat, right? Mm -hmm. I gave the comparison immediately after the post-game show about West Ham, Brighton and Brentford. And so many people on our YouTube comments, Kev, have come at me saying, don't you anything know about anything about football? I don't know why I use that voice because that's not fair. Let me correct myself. Don't you know anything about... No, not really. Don't you know anything about football? These things can happen in football. Kev's right. It's football. And I'm, I'm like, no... I'm sorry, it's not just football. To me, it's the manner in which we lost. We fell apart in the second half. We were bitch slapped. West Ham were not, Brentford were not, and Brighton were not. And then the other excuse is, yeah, but they play at 100% when they're playing against Liverpool, and Liverpool only play at 70%, whereas when they're playing against Arsenal, it's 100%. I'm like, well, shame on Liverpool for not putting in 100% against every team. So, Kev, my first question, is it okay? Because I feel like this is part of the old enabling culture of the Arsenal and we're trying to move on from that. Is it okay to be disappointed? And is yeah. it okay to not accept this as a free hit? Of course. 100%, of course, it's okay to... to 
accept all those things you said. Be disappointed, of course. Free hits are free hits don't come at Arsenal. So let's have it right. Free hits are with teams that are looking at relegation who, who are not the size of Arsenal. That's that's for sure. Free hits don't come with Arsenal because there's always pressure riding on it. And one thing I will say, there has to be some context in this. This was a big game for Liverpool too. Mm -hmm. Liverpool against West Ham away is a is a is a is a good game, but it's not as big as Arsenal coming to Anfield. They know they've got to be up for it. They know that. And they gave us the respect we deserve. We gave them the respect they deserve. They gave us the respect we deserve. And there's no disrespect on any of the other teams because the other teams got certain results against them, Sophie. And that's part of the reason why I said about it's a game of football. Under, trying to understand how the mechanics of when you play against lesser teams and when you don't play when you play against the big boys and then you play against lesser teams, there is a difference. Fans are different. Fans are different when Arsenal come to town. Fans are different when Man City come to town. Man United come to town. You know that, Sophie. If, and if fans are different, players are different. Mm -hmm. So I just want to add a bit of context, but 100%, of course you can be disappointed. I was disappointed to lose like that. 100%. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we said it on Kev Says on Friday. We don't do free hits at the Arsenal Football Club. Correct. Free hits don't happen at Arsenal. Reggie says you absolutely should be disappointed. I think about the Chicago Bulls in the 90s getting killed by the Pistons year after year. Um, Jean says we have uh, we have been beaten at Liverpool for eight years. Tammy says, yes, we all had great expectations, thought we had turned the corner. Craig says it's OK losing to Liverpool, but it's not when we don't show any fight. No, I don't agree with that, Craig. I thought the team did fight. But in the first half. No, no, but what, again, what you can't legislate for, you see, Sophie, is mistakes. Mistakes turn the game ugly quick mm -hmm. against the top teams. You make, the, you make elementary mistakes and the game gets taken away from you quick. And that's what happened. So, you know, did we even have an opportunity to... to to really stay in the game, no, because the mistakes we made, whether it's a back pass or whatever, getting robbed of the ball, you know, it's, it's right in front of our right in front of our box. So they, they, we got they, punished. They were, they were very, and I felt for Nuno. I mean, I did. And unfortunately, with a young team, like we said in the post game show, there's going to be those mistakes that come up. They were waiting to happen. I'm really happy, though, the fans have not crucified him at all, yeah. considering how well he's done. I'm very proud yeah. of the fan base. Uh, Boy says, our performance was dreadful. The team lost belief in what they were doing. That hurts more than any scoreline. I think this is... I disagree with that as well. They didn't, they didn't lose... They, our performance in the first half was not dreadful. I re-watched it. It was not dreadful. And I'm sure we're going to get to some of this later on, because uh, I've even put down key words here, so. Key words, because, I love a key word, Kev. Because I, I think it's it's important to understand, yeah, we, we lost and the, the manner in which we lost wasn't great because the game got taken away from us quick. In the second half, it's sure did. Yeah, in, in, the, in, in the second half. But let's, let's, let's be brutally honest there. The first half, do you know what? Our fans were, were incredible. They were. And we were in the game, Sof. We were in the game. But when you make elementary mistakes against the top teams, you, you get punished. You do. You certainly do, and we did. Okay, so I'll keep putting um, some comments up. Uh, Jean René says, even on the third goal, uh, Tavares lost his head because he wanted to redeem himself. Yeah, but you know what? We also 
criticised players for not bouncing back from mistakes. And I will give him this. Even though he made mistakes, he wasn't afraid to keep putting himself out there and trying. Now, granted, it's not a training wheel session and we shouldn't be experimenting on that free kick, for example. That looked like a brand new training pitch free kick that just failed us. Like we needed to capitalize more on those opportunities that we got, Kev. I don't know if you mm. remember the free kick. It yeah. was a bit, was it a free kick or a corner? It was a bit ballsy either yeah. way. Look, whatever the routine, whether it's free kicks or corners. Yeah, so I, I like that he kept going for it. I want to put a couple more of these up from this first question. Disagree with KC. You can legislate for mistakes. World-class players tend to make less than rookies. That's a fact. Trent makes less mistakes than Nuno. We need more patience. We don't We so, don't have that. Yeah. So, so how does he disagree with me when he's agreeing that they don't make mistakes? Yeah. Are you, are you, uh, Wes Bird, are you asking me if I'm a bit low personally or are my microphones low? Because <laughs> I'm on a high today, to be honest. Had a couple of great meetings in La La Land. So I'm on a high, but if my microphone's low, you just let me know. Um, it would have been more embarrassing if not for Ramsdale. Right. Uh, Mikey says Liverpool press and season aggression switched. You know what? I spoke to a Liverpool fan, season ticket holder, after the game, Kev. Mm -hmm. And they said that that second half especially was some of the best football they've seen Liverpool play in two or three years. And I, they they were brilliant in that second half. They they totally had our number. It was m yeah. men versus boys. They were it, a bit too they were a bit too experienced for us. So they were a bit too effective for us, and they had a bit too much no, know how. Yeah, that's what they did. They had they had more know how. They they have all the nuances and you know how to trap us, and we're we're just not there yet. So future shock. I think this is a really important point. Either way, we can't attack. This needs sorting. We're ranked nineteenth in the league for open play goals. So as good as things look on paper, Kev, in terms of our form and the form table, when you dig into the data and the analytics just a little bit more. These are the concerning things, and we're going to get on to that. I'm going to get yeah. to my second question for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Tiago was brilliant. And you could tell they missed him. I mean, you know, dude's won Champions League. He's, he's, a, he's a class player, and he was replaced by a team. We, they actually had the ability to bring on a baby in mm. the second half. The game was done. Even though that baby, by the way, is lauded to be the next Gerard, of course. Okay, so question number two. Is it okay to criticise Bukayo Saka? Fatigue is definitely kicking in. I love him. He is the Don of the Arsenal future. He's the one. But I'm starting to get a little bit concerned about his form i think he's doing things in the game kev that go unnoticed because he's a player that sucks the opposition towards him when he has the ball or if he's even moving without the ball he takes players with him but is it okay to criticize him without being ripped to shreds by other Arsenal fans. Well, of course, he's an Arsenal player. Of course he's on the pitch. Listen, I, I, as I said, I watched the game again and Bakayo Saka was really our outlet. He was our outlet in the first half. We've discussed this, Sophie. We have discussed this. The key for him and Smith Rowe is goals, assists or production. That is vital for what we want to do. There has to be production. So, of course, you could criticize Saka's production because you know what, Sophie? Saka got into some really good positions. He broke the lines really well. He got up and down that, that right hand side and he was homing in on goal. But we didn't get the production. Maybe it was a wrong pass or a wrong cross or whatever. Sophie, he just didn't, he, he just couldn't influence the game how we want him to. We want him and Smith Rowe 
because you could put Smith Rowe because Smith Rowe, you didn't really see Smith Rowe first off, although he was trying to do a number on Trent. But second half, they came on top. And once goals are going in, it, it knocks the stuffing out of you. It really does. That second goal knocked the stuffing out of us. And then we were trying and they were just catching us. They had too much know-how. But of course you can criticise. Every player's criticisable. So. Yeah, I, and I think with Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe, it's always kind of, I fear, I, tr I never tread on eggshells giving my opinion, but I also understand that they've carried the team and I want to be respectful of that. Mm -hmm. But also, like Patrick says, yes, of course, it's okay with any player. Like if I'm going to criticise Sambi, for example, mm -hmm. we should be able um, to criticise Saka and even Emil, Emil Smith-Rowe. Mm -hmm. Make those mistakes against Villa, you might get away with it, but against Liverpool, it's a foregone conclusion that they'll capitalise 100%. Boy says Saka was disastrous, needs to be rested, looks proper jaded when going forward, not sure if mental fatigue or Arteta has given him too many instructions. What do you see, Kev? How is how is it too many instructions? I don't know where people get with all this too many instructions nonsense. Well, I That's think nonsense. he's saying maybe. No, I know what he's saying. Yeah. But but you can't... I, I just don't know how giving a player instructions can be classed as too many instructions. I think Saka this knows, Saka knows what to do. Super Kev, I think this comes from Project Restart, where everyone could hear Arteta on the touchline every second of every game, and they've taken that on board. Yeah, but Sophie... As, I'm not saying it's right at no, all. No, I'm just, no, but Sophie, but my, the, the point is, I disagree with that, because Project Restart, we ended up winning the FA Cup. Yes, but the league... So, I'm not, not, yeah, but so you can't have it both ways. It's either it works or it doesn't. If it works in the FA Cup that season, it didn't work last season. And all of a sudden, we've gone on a 10-game unbeaten run, obviously come down to earth with a bang on Saturday. But there's, that's, still te that's still a good run. So... Again, well, for for a new team, yeah, I think I yeah, think it's not bad. You know, yeah, for a new team is it, listen, at the end of the day, Sophie, remember these certain players that came in, it was what have Arsenal done? I Who just are these guys? I just don't want to go back to enabling and accepting that result because we're on a new trajectory. And the bitch slapping days, I thought of course there's going to be some that are still there. But at this moment in time, in this particular moment, especially with West Ham, Brentford and Brighton, and you guys can keep slapping me and calling me names if you want. I don't care. I will bring those up as examples. West Ham Yeah, but, yeah, are, but like anything, Sophie, examples are going to come up all season. Different all season. examples. And, and, and it's, uh, my next question will cover that. But real quick... I wanted to put Andy's. He hasn't been productive um, as a right wing in his third season. Let's be honest, he's still a big talent, though. Johnny Boy wants to know why Saka isn't being rested. I have something coming up for you on that. It's Arteta's job to manage Saka and ESR. Leon wants me to leave Saka alone. Uh, angry Guna 10 says he needs to be dropped. James says, we rely on individual brilliance, Sophie. And most of that brilliance is coming from Smith Rowe and Saka. Until the others step up, he can't be rested, sadly. I think that's a sensible point. Good, good point. Football Again. Capo. Sorry, go on. No, go I'll, on. I'll add this one for you, Kev, and then you can chime in. Uh, Emil Smith-Rowe needs to play centrally and another warrior like Martinelli down the left. Tavares was exposed defensively, but everyone besides Arteta knew that. He's better going forward. Why not give him support? Um, I thought he had support. Is it okay to say Martinelli should have come on at some point in this game? No, you, no, you can say you can. Of course, you can. You could say what you like. You said it on on Saturday, and you know the fact of the matter is a manager makes the decisions, and sometimes Sophie, like I said, a manager, the team has to suffer. 
You know, the team has to suffer. And they suffered. They suffered mm -hmm. against Liverpool. And I don't know why Martinez didn't come on. But the fact of the matter is he didn't. So, mm -hmm. hey, what we don't... Are you gonna are you gonna batter the manager for not bringing Martinelli on at three nil down or four nil down? No, you but know? I think I think give him a sh a shot without him even be making an appearance again. It's just glaring to but me. It but went, we'll get... it went bent quick, so that's did. the problem. It did. Uh, you know. GB brings up a good point. How many of the England players at the Euros have come back and been great? Only Declan Rice is having a top season. Fantastic point. True. True. Absolutely. Mo True. Fowler says, like you said previously, so if we cannot coddle him, he needs to put... Yes. Kevin agrees with me on this. You don't molly coddle anybody. You've got to be productive, Sophie. Goals, assists, and we need quality from that right-hand side. That's what we need. Kev, do, he... you th do you think he was our best outfield player? Do you After know what, going Sophie, back and seeing the game? Sophie, Saka was 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 our outlet in the first half. I'm telling you, he'd done all right in the first half. Second half was a different kettle of fish because mm. Liverpool came on strong. Trent Arnold, th th listen, one thing what happens is as soon as they win the ball in that central midfield, Alexander Trent Arnold, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold is like a winger. Yeah. Right? And so is Timikas. <laughs> Timikas. Timikas is like a winger. Mm -hmm. So our wide men are playing like fullbacks. That's why you hardly saw Smith Rowe. That's why, especially second half, you hardly saw Saka. Because they were just pinning us back. And they're really good at it. Yeah. You know, we have to be play we have to be playing at the top of our game with experience to be able to get around that. I'm telling totally, you. Totally, totally agree. And Universal Greek, very well put. Criticism is okay, but none of that venom spitting, Twitter esque claptrap nonsense. Uh Wizard, Arteta is relying on defending and scrapping goals this season. Are you worried, Sophie? You know why? Because I think I still don't think he believes in his strikers. I don't think, Kev, he goes what into you a that game. Impression? He picks them. I he picks them. But yeah. he's he he's picking them because he can't put his trust in someone like Balogun, right? There's something going on with Martinelli. Because otherwise, why not throw him on? even to give him like 10 minutes in a game like this and see if he can grab a goal, build some confidence. Maybe he gets picked for Newcastle. Obama Yang is rested. Lacazette, I love him. You and I are very hot on Lacazette, but he doesn't score goals. So if Obama Yang doesn't score and you can't rely on Emil Smith Rowe to continually get goals out of midfield because it's not his number one objective on his job description, but it's mm. on his job description. Saka just hasn't been that guy yet to be able to get those goals. So part of me thinks that there's some damage control and call me balmy here. And you know how I feel about how I felt about Arteta and I'm defending him here in saying, I don't think that he trusts them to take their chances, which, which is why I think that Arsenal football club will make it their mission this summer to buy a top shelf striker maybe two and it's coming right. up in my next questions kev but bring it bring it because uh, uh that, okay. that that was wh well that was where um my cr my critical eye watched the game and this is a really important question okay because i need i i you are far more educated than i to talk about the striker situation so i'm going to jump ahead to my other question but i'll circle back to mm -hmm. my third right my fourth question was is it okay to want obama yang to be benched and maybe even sold this summer kev what does he offer when he doesn't score what does he offer when we're squeezed and there is no outlet especially on the flanks Tracking back, yes, he does that 
often but not consistently. Talk me through it, Kev. Is it okay to think we need to move on from no, our forward okay. line? It, listen, it's okay. It's your opinion. It's okay to think that way. But here's what I will tell you. You could have had anybody up front. <laughs> they weren't doing anything against Liverpool. Especially second half. Especially second half. You could have had anyone you wanted up there. Maybe if we'd have had a big man, that changes the game because we could hit his chest and we could get up the pitch. But unfortunately, when they start coming on strong, the only ball up to Aubameyang is a, is a, a ball that all, all he could do is flick it on. I've been there. It's, it's, ho it's horrible as a striker because as a team, you don't control the ball. When you don't control the ball, you can't then get your movements and your timing right. Everything's a chase. Everything. And the defence and the midfield are all in control. They control you as opposed to you controlling them. That's the problem. That really is the problem, so. But one thing I will say, Sophie, the production of our front boys isn't good enough. Let's, let's get that right off the bat. Because even in the first half, Sophie, we had opportunities where we could hurt Liverpool and we weren't good enough. We have, we, we have to be able to hurt these teams. That's why we, we discussed about punching them in the mouth. When we get the opportunity, we've got to hurt them. We had opportunities to, to play better and do something, but we weren't good enough, Sophie. Now, you could be very right there that their change might be needed. We know Lacazette's not going to be at the club, Sophie. We know that. He's not going to be at the club. But I think there might, we might need another striker foot stroke forward as well. Mm -hmm. Because, do you know what? Saka and Smith Rowe are young, they're young lads. And I've said this all the time, They've got major talent, but we're relying too much on them, Soph. You look... And, and do you know what I actually looked at, Sophie? I looked at Liverpool's front three and I looked at our front four. The ages of Mane, Jota and Salah against, obviously, Smithrow, baby, Saka, baby, Aubameyang pushing on a bit and Lacazette pushing on a bit. The energy that Liverpool expand at the top end of the pitch is serious. We don't have it. Can I and ask... It's, and it's an issue. I And I totally hear you, Super Kev. So a few of the squaddies are asking and people in chat... Mm -hmm. Is it a case of in games in games like this, because we've seen and you've been on the sideline where you've seen Oba make those runs in those channels, more so last season than this season, and we just were never able to service him. Mm -hmm. Some people are still screaming for that CM that they feel like we still need. Some mm -hmm. people are saying it's a case of well, if the midfield, like you said, if the if we got more control of the ball, if we had a midfield, the midfield was where we lost the game. Yeah, yeah. It, look, again, Liverpool, they done a nuts. Second half, they turned it up on us, so They turned it up on us. And we, and we couldn't handle it. You know, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, we, we just weren't good enough on the day or they, 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 they trapped Sambi. He was the one that they trapped and they trapped him time and again. So I think Mikel Arteta done the right thing, taking him off to spare him. If you, I'm honest. You, you mentioned but, that. But, but the damage was already done. And what about 
being a striker in a game, Kev, where you're not getting the ball and you're struggling to impose yourself on the game. You just can't Been go there hunting. Loads of times. You Been can't there go loads of times. Sorry. Right. So explain to me, you just don't go hunting for the ball because you also have to be disciplined in how the manager set the team up. But I felt like a Bamiyang and Lacazette, they couldn't impose themselves it's when... Important. Yeah. When, when, when you don't have the ball... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you are part of the system, but that's where you you say to yourself, right? That's where you've got to work. So, I watched it. It's not as if that the the, the, the lads weren't working, but it's it's ineffective work. Why? Because the opposition were were that much stronger than us, especially in that midfield. So. As many runs as Aubameyang tried to make to try and nick the ball and uh, Lacazette's in there trying to have a dig in there, they just played around them, them got it out to their fullbacks, and another attack was coming. It is going to be interesting to see who... Because for me, we've always said on this show, Kevin, you, this is why I feel like 10 minutes for Martinelli, even in a game like this, matters. Because when AFCON comes along, do you think Arteta's already decided what's going to happen? Is he going to just play Lacazette up front? Martinelli on the left. Is Balogun going to get a chance? Is his loan spell going to come? What are your What's your thought process on on this one? I'm not sure. I don't know because you know we're talking about players there, and we haven't even mentioned Pepe. It's crazy. You know, he's not um, even on my "Is it okay?" questions. <laughs> yeah, you know, we haven't even mentioned Pepe, and 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 let's be let's be honest. If obviously. Um, the, the African players go to the African Cup of Nations. Fine. But I, I think that Martinelli will get opportunities. I honestly believe he will get uh, opportunities to play. Odegaard, mm -hmm. you know, that control of the midfield, Odegaard might have, might have helped. But this is all hindsight now, remember, Solf, because mm -hmm. we were happy having 4-4-2. Four, four, we, we, we had a set team. That's the team that had rolled and rolled and rolled. Fine. No complaints. No complaints whatsoever. Correct. You know, we're, we're, we're hurt with, with the result, 100%. Maybe we see things a little bit different here and there, of course, which is our, is, is our opinions. But at the end of the day, Sophie, if we, if we cannot impose ourselves on the opposition or when we do get our opportunities to attack them like we did in the first half, Mm -hmm. and we cannot be productive, then against the top sides, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Um, uh, Brian, we've made, we've, we're going to do another show on this when we get closer to the January transfer window. We don't want to speculate. We know that we've been linked with a couple of strikers, whether it's from Juventus, Fiorentina, Sevilla. Um, we will address all of those as they come up. Uh, it's uh, there'll be plenty of time for that, but I mean, Kevin and I wanted Tammy Abraham. A lot of Arsenal fans poo pooed that, they even poo pooed it when we suggested Lukaku. But that's the kind of time well, with the way Arteta wants to play as well from those flanks. And wait till Tierney comes back because you know he loves to play that way. We've got no one who can get on the end of the ball. Mm. Headering it, and it's you're right easy, about Udegaard, Kev. You're right yeah. about Udegaard. I asked you the question. Was it more of a ball holder than a ball carrier type game? And I, for me, felt like we just lacked any type of maturity on and off the ball against this Liverpool team. And that will happen to a lot of teams. But someone like Udegaard maybe should have been introduced early, especially in that second half. Yeah, but the you problem know. is, you see, Sophie, and, and, and this is... Having watched rewatched the game, it was okay... We didn't start too bad the second half, and then we made the mistake and they scored, right? Mm -hmm. So when that happens, so if you don't start too bad, it's not as if they're coming through you all the time. And then we make that mistake, we go 2-0 down. Then we push, or we're looking to push, and there was a spell, I don't know if you remember, early second half, where Liverpool robbed the ball outside of our box three or four times. Mm -hmm. They just kept trapping us in the midfield. Soon as Sambi got it, there were bodies on him. Why? Because they, they knew he shows it to you a bit too much. 
They're, and they was they're so great off the ball anyway, Kev, that you can't allow clever those. They're so clever, but it's the way they do it. Yep. They target one, and as soon as that ball's on its way to him, they're after him. He doesn't know the press is coming so quick. But as soon as mm -hmm. he takes his touch, they're on him. So even if he shifts it, the next one's on him. So, and then when they win it outside your box, Sophie, Sophie they, they're coming at you from all angles, aren't they? So, and, and we have an issue, Kev. We have an issue with, you know, you, last season, your biggest beef was how terrible we are off the ball, right? Mm -hmm. This season, we've been a little bit better off the ball. But on the ball, that mature, I've, I've always, I've said like, wow, these young players are really mature, but it, it's only until you go to Anfield where you realize also there's a naivety to the maturity. Mm. And I think that is a difference. I wanted to put this up for you because I thought it was a really great point from smooth one J. When was the last time we hit a great counter where the striker is on the last man and get to go to tear down the field? Oba is always defending. No, I could tell you the last one we had was Spurs. With that move, you remember? The, um, the, the, the corner, when Emil Smith Rowe Sm came Smith in Rowe, to smash it in. Smith mm -hmm. Rowe, no, Smith Rowe cut it back for over. Yeah. That was the last that was the last counter attack, re really, real counter attack we had. I felt like we had a few counters against Tottenham that maybe didn't come off, but we definitely had and put ourselves in a position to do that. Curtis, good evening. Why don't you just come on the show? So we can chat. I love that Curtis appears in our chat box. 19th in the league for chances created. We mentioned that at the top of the show. Our Teta ball is not helping the strikers. We have never replaced Santi. Mm. And, and what position do we sit in? We're fifth, aren't we? We're fifth in the league, so. And. We are. You know, yeah, but I'm just saying we're fifth in the league. And we're struggling to attack. We need we if we can get that attack right or half right, we we can be a dangerous team. You know how sometimes stats and data, you know, a lot of people didn't like the money ball angle. You know, you buy players on data and stats and stuff like that. And it's a little bit like the possession game. Team can have 89% possession. You could you could say the Barcelona, um, what was it, Chelsea, Barcelona in the Champions League, or you can look at a lot of a lot of games where people have 70, 80% possession, but then they lose the game. Sometimes stats are deceiving. Stats ain't always true. Right. Let's get to the next question here. Um <sighs> Please take this in the spirit of which it is said, everybody. This is why I'm trying to articulate myself well tonight. <sighs> I know Vinny's needed. Let's bring Vinny out. You're right. How many? 400 of you in live wow. chat. 400. Come on, guys. Come on. Like, uh, don't. Smash don't let... it, hit it, nut it. It's Christmas, it Vinny. In there. Christmas, <laughs> Vinny, with the bow tie on the side. Look, love it. <laughs> but love also, it. Kev, they, they also want you to do some nutting. I mean, you know. Hit it. Go on, nut it. Nut it. Hit the like button, guys. Come on. Come on. All right. Um, Kev, is it okay to criticize Mikel Arteta on a game-by-game -game basis and not want him fired? For example, the spat on the sideline, which I brought up at the weekend, there was more to it than just Klopp versus Arteta. It was... The ex Evertonian on the sideline at Anfield giving it some. So there's two reasons why everyone got riled up. One, because he's an ex Evertonian and a captain at that. And two, he was giving it some to their manager. And they were protecting their boy Mane, who many Arsenal fans think should, you know, have been sent off, which I think is a bit extreme. Basically, he's very smart and he knows how to handle his body and work it at home to get decisions by the referee. We've seen top teams do it. Kev, is it okay to criticise Mikel Arteta and not want him fired on a game-by-game -game basis? Of course. It's going to happen no matter what anyway. People are going to criticise the manager 
anyway. That comes with the territory, Sophie. It comes with the territory. So, you know, it is fine. It is okay to, to, to do that. 100%. Of course. So, so how is it then that if I criticize his sideline behavior, which, mm. by the way, a lot of experts or folks agreed that Liverpool was certainly galvanized after that, but then mm. also, isn't it okay to say, okay, I understand the midfield substitution that was done in a very timely fashion. We were dying in midfield and we needed a change. Mm -hmm. But should he have adapted a little bit sooner after that with some of the other subs? Should he have given Martinelli a, a chance? Why not bring him, bring him on? The manager is an easy target, but let me tell you something. When the shit hits the fan, the manager's the one that loses his job. 100%. I've always said to Kev, I wish we could sack some players. They, I did a whole show on it with Kev where the shit was hitting the fan and I'm like, I wish I could sack Meza Ozil, Kalasinac, Sogradis, Mustafi, Callum Chambers, Jenkinson. Why can't I sack them? Why is Unai Emery getting the sack? Why aren't the players getting the sack? Look at, look at Man United. Why isn't Maguire getting the sack? Why isn't Matic getting the sack? McTominay, Fred... No, it's always the manager that gets the sack. So he's not. it's not a, the case that he's an easy target. There's just moments in a game where a manager earns his crust. And yeah, I just... But, yeah, Sophie, uh, I understand that. But here's the issue. The manager can't legislate when the team makes mistakes. No, no, he don't, no managers or no players go out on the pitch to make mistakes. But when mistakes are made that are critical to the to the scoreline, it it went away from us so quickly, Sophie. It was crazy. And and, and then you, you, I suppose sometimes I remember I remember being on a, on on pitch yourself, and you're in the game. Mm -hmm. and then you're out the game in a blink and you think to yourself, what, what's happened there? And then before you know it, the olays are happening or whatever, you know, time, there's still enough time on the clock, so to speak, but you're free nil down. Mm -hmm. you, ain't, you ain't coming back at Anfield at free nil down. You are not, not against this Liverpool team whose tails are up. So I understand, yeah, you could say, should he have done this, should he have done that, he could have done this, but it's all after the event, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, again, 11th game, we lose. But we've we done pretty well the 10 previous to that. So the key is, and just like anything, Sophie, can we dust ourselves down? And win the next game. Mm -hmm. We will have we will have blips, and rightly so. We're the youngest team in the league, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we don't really want to hear that. We want progress. Well, I just don't want to get bitch slapped anymore. And I think that this was indicative of the fact that as much as everyone thinks our DNA and culture has evolved under Arteta, the truth of the matter is we still got bitch slapped and West Ham and Brentford and Brighton didn't and stop coming at me with that. No. Yeah, it's football. It can happen. It's an anomaly. Crystal Palace beat Man City. When does that happen? Doesn't happen often. Right. But the point is, is that three teams who are trying rising West Ham in particular in every cup competition in the top four, you know, lost this weekend, which helped us, but we couldn't help ourselves. We all said on this show, all of us collectively, me, you, the squaddies, the fans, as long as we don't lose in the manner in which we've been used to losing, we're cool with it. Yeah, I would we, have been cool uh, do with you it. Think we, do you, okay, let me ask you a question then, Sophie. Do you think we lost the game in the manner like we have previously? Yes. I don't. 
I think we, obviously we made mistakes, which were costly. But I don't think we we lost it in the manner like we usually, we, we have done in the past. Saying, I... after 25 minutes, the game's over. No, 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 no. What's the difference if it's after 25 minutes or after 71 minutes? What? Well, 71 minutes, you were in the game longer. No, we, we were never in that game, Kev. No, Sophie, in, we were in the game in the first half. Again, I watched it again. We had some really good breaks, but we couldn't do it. We weren't productive in the final, final third. Right? We weren't productive. They ended up scoring in the, what is it, 41st minute. Mm -hmm. You know, they ended up scoring. Obviously, Ramsdale made a couple of saves before then. They, that, but that's going to happen at Anfield. Nobody goes to Anfield and and they don't create chances. They create chances against everyone. Let's be honest. Their front three are as dangerous as you get in world football. Let's that's, that's, let's be real. So the fact that they created chances, we know they're going to create chances. But we had to, we have to stay in the game, and we did stay in the game. Uh, okay, I actually. Didn't think for us. I thought that we reverted back to the mental impotence of not being mentally engaged in a game for 90 minutes plus added time. That's how it felt to me, which is yeah. why I compare it to the old Arsenal, whether we're down three goals in 20, 37 minutes, like Jack Wilshire told us when he was a guest on our show, or whether we were three nil down after 71 minutes. And at Sophie. half time, our manager and the team did not mm -hmm. do anything to affect each other to Sophie. come on with a. So, but Sophie, again, listen, I, I suggest you watch the game again and watch what happens. I watched, I watched no, the, no, no, the second no, half on. again. Hold on. Okay. So when Tavares gets the ball off Salah, we are not in trouble. He passes the ball to Jota inside our box and he goes through and scores. You cannot, it doesn't matter what you want to say at half time. You cannot legislate for that. You can't. But Kev, this is the innate, okay. This is no, but, the part. No, but let's just deal with this thing first. It, this is why we continue this what, whole. What, what, what would the so manager say at half time? the whole time? free hit. No, but it's not. I'm not talking about a free hit. I'm talking about the fact of the matter. Tavares won the ball. He's moving up the pitch and he plays a ball blind into Jota inside our box mm -hmm. to score. I'm not saying that's Arteta's fault. No, no, I never said you did. I'm, what I'm saying is it doesn't matter what you say at halftime when something like that happens. No, but as the manager, you can affect change. So why not? Aubameyang was having a bit of a horror show. Um, bring on Martinelli with 70 minutes gone. Why not? Why not? Yeah, Everyone's Sophie, forgotten it, the Martinelli Sophie, who played against Chelsea. Why not bring on Pepe? Yeah, but Sophie, yeah, bring him on. Yeah, but Sophie, here we go again. It, that, whatever reason why the manager never brought them on, we were 3-0 down. So I don't know why. I can't tell you why. I can't tell you. But the but point, what, your question to me was, is it the same as it was before? And, and I'm I like, don't yes, think it was. I don't I, think it was. I think when you lose 4-0 at Anfield, nothing's changed. And this is no. supposedly a team that is evolving and changing. Now, we've, we, we scraped through some of these results. Everyone wants to criticize Unai Emery's 22 unbeaten game run that there were some dross draws in there and stuff like that. Okay, let's talk about the Norwich game. Let's talk about the Burnley game. Let's talk about the Brighton game. Let's talk about the second half against Tottenham. Let's talk about the second half against Leicester City. I'm not saying that these players would have changed anything, but why not try to affect the game when you have other assets on the bench? Because in the context of your question, no, absolutely nothing changed at Anfield against Liverpool. But that's where I disagree with you. I disagree. I think we made mistakes. Listen, Tavares wasn't even pressured, Sophie. It was just a mistake. It wasn't great play from 
Liverpool, was it? It wasn't. It was just a bad pass. So, uh, you know, the, the, the mental weakness, no, that, I, I still don't think that was mental weakness. He played a bad pass. Exactly why not try, Kev? That's my point. Yeah. It, the question is too, it's not about yeah, but, everything. Yeah, it's Sophie, about against Liverpool we're talking, yeah, you guys. Sophie, Sophie. Nothing's for me, changed. For me, I don't know. It's damage limitation at 3-0. It's damage limitation. Let's have it. Let's have it right. But that's you, the point. You, are, Every, you, you are not. Yeah, but you are not. Sophie, it's 70 minutes. You are not turn. Sometimes you've got to take your beat in and move on. So that's what you have to do sometimes. That's what you have to do sometimes. Sometimes you but have to But we do it all the beat. time. James, no, we don't. We, no, do. we don't. We, no, we, we get beaten all the time in the league other than Chelsea, who we've had their number and we How, beat Man United. We, we're un, we were unbeaten in 10. Is City, is City... The context of the question was against Liverpool, not these other teams. Don't entrap me in that. No, the no, question Sophie, was, did I'm you talking... see something different with Liverpool? And I said, no, it's the yeah, same. And I, I, I thought there was. And I thought there was. We're so not ready for any of but that. That's not the question. That, that that is not the question. I'm saying, did we lose in the same manner? I yes. don't think we. I don't think we did. Four nil says it all. We lost in the no, same we lost manner. 4 we lost four nil. But I I don't think we lost in the same way like a capitulation. I don't because you know why? Because we had a better goalkeeper and Aaron Ramsdale saved us. From being no, it's not embarrassed that. It's not, greatly. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. The second goal is crucial. Ray, I'm I don't know you. why you keep putting this question up 25 times. Okay, but let's look at it. 2021, Klopp versus Arteta. Who do you think will have more points? Are you serious? Klopp's going to have more points at the end of the season. That's That's what matters. Stop with this stuff. Again, it's... It's not that we lost to Liverpool. For me, it's the manner in which we lost. 400 of you in live chat right now, hit that like button if you like, like this conversation. Subscribe to the show if you want to hear more from us. When we're, we're going to be disagreeing a lot. It's not Monday morning quarterbacking. This is Liverpool. And when you're talking about making strides and moving a team forward, even though it's new and it's fresh, you cannot capitulate the way we did in the second half. Ramsdale was the, oh, I put up the meme of the Battle of the Bastards, Game of Thrones. That was Ramsdale in the second half, which moves me to my final question. Is it okay to want Ramsdale to be captain, even though he's the goalkeeper? He was the only leader at Anfield. The only one. Where was our captain and vice captain? He was still yelling, bellowing, making saves, it felt like he was on an island all on his own. And then he comes out afterwards. Where's Aubameyang in these interviews when we get bitch slapped? Only wants to come out when he's holding the, the hat trick ball. Is it okay to want Aaron Ramsdale to be captain? Because to me, when John Terry was made captain at Chelsea, he was young. Steven Gerrard, he was young. Jack Grealish, he was young. Lot of players Ramsdale Kev, get ain't made be captain. No captain at Arsenal, so that's for sure. <laughs> He's not going to be captain at Arsenal. So you could you could want it, of course you can. <laughs> you could want what you want, Sophie, but he's not going to be captain of Arsenal. Kev, he was man of the match, and we lost four nil. Yeah. What does that tell you? Yeah, he dumped, He had a good game. That's what that tells me. But he's not going to be captain, Sophie. Why? Sophie, we've been here before. You mentioned Tierney, now you're mentioning Ramsdale. But because he had a good game, he's supposed to be captain. He's not just had a good game. He's been the player of the season so far. He, Sophie, he's, he's becoming so, so, Mr. Sophie, Arsenal. Sophie, he's not going to be captain. Well, I just not, said, not is it okay eyes. to want no, that? I said yes. I said yes. But for me, he's not going to be captain. Alex thinks you sound like a bank manager denying me a loan. <laughs> Whatever, but no. 
All right. Well, he's, do, he's um, doing his job. That's what he's paid to do. Those are my five. My is it okay? Is it okay to be disappointed losing to yep. Liverpool? Is it okay to criticize Saka? Is it okay to criticize Arteta on a game by game basis without wanting him fired? Is it okay to want Aubameyang benched and maybe even sold this summer? And the last one, is it okay to want Ramsdale to be captain even though he's goalkeeper? Um, that's it. That's all I've got. Kev, did you see anything else when you rewatched the game that jumped out to you that you think? I think, I think the, again, the biggest issue I saw was when we did have opportunities, when we were on the attack, we weren't good enough. We weren't good enough. We weren't, Sophie. And that, and as you said, Curtis put a point in there, didn't he? That about 19th in chances created or whatever it was. It's not good enough, Solf. We've got to be better. Mm -hmm. We have to be better at the top end of the pitch. And, and let's be honest. We've done okay. Uh, uh, you know, we've gone away to Leicester and we've won there and it's been good and we've kept a clean sheet and all that kind of thing. But this level against a Liverpool team who was smarting, remember, after that West Ham game, you know, we have to be better at the top end of the pitch. We do. I had a bonus question, but should I wait until tomorrow to ask you that question? Or do you want me to ask it now? Because I'm not sure everyone's prepared for this on a Monday. You're asking me. It's either you're asking or you don't. I could handle it, is it whatever is it, it is. Is it okay to think, not what I think, is it okay to think that with the result at Liverpool, and with AFCON coming up, that Xhaka will immediately be placed back into the midfield lineup because well, that's we, what I well, think Arteta thinks it's okay that he's going to do. No, <laughs> but but again, that's a lot of thinking and all that kind of thing. We we don't know. If we're honest, we don't know because is he going to be actually be fit? We don't know. He's not. He's not played a game in anger since. I think he's only just returned to light training. He's been training in Dubai. Yeah, so he's just returned to training. So, I, I, Sophie, I don't know. I've no idea. Do I want him back in <laughs> is a different question. Love you too, Matt. Well, do you want him back in even at... Oh. Unless we go by a midfielder, he's he's going to. But it was my bonus okay question. Mm. Is it okay to think that Mikel Arteta is going to do this? Because it but seems to know. me inevitable now. But I don't know. I don't know. But one thing Granit Xhaka is, he's more, obviously he's more experienced than Sambi. Yeah. He is more experienced than Sambi. And he, but even with Granit, we've had Granit there at... He's made major mistakes in front of our back four. Against the lesser teams. So. All right. Well, look, that's it for tonight. That's Monday Madness for you in a nutshell. A bit of a twist to the top five talking points with Is It OK? Let us know what you think in our YouTube comments, answering all of the Is It OK? questions. There's going to be more on this. We've got Newcastle coming up. I mean, I'm going to have some questions prep for Kev tomorrow. I mean, I would rest Emil Smith-Rowe and Saka against Newcastle, but maybe I'm crazy. Newman thinks I've won 6-1 tonight. Martin has survived. Matty K giggling his ass off in hot. It's hot here, isn't it, Matty K? Tell everyone how hot is it. How hot it is here. <laughs> it's just another manic Monday. We've got a Chelsea fan in the house. God, I hate you guys. I say that with respect. You're so good. Just go away, Jerry. Leave us alone. Let us wallow in our own pity here and stress. No, there's no pity, Soph. No, we got no time for pity. No time for pity. Yeah, we do dissect it and we chop it up, but there's no wallowing in self-pity here. We, we go again. That's it. We go again tomorrow night, just waiting for Holiday Hillier to get back to us to see if he's oh, actually going to yeah. show up for the Tuesday-ish club. But fear not, everybody, because as you know, I'm always organised. And I know where he's gone, Ilya... by the way. So he went to the Bermuda Triangle, didn't 
He's got to be in the book, Boo Boo Duterte. He's just vanished, did he? He's vanished. <laughs> He's vanished. Listen, there's no show without you guys. Um, you guys absolutely rock. And thank you to all 400 plus of you who joined us on this Monday night. Wasn't an easy weekend, but like Kev says, we sit in fifth and we've got Newcastle coming up. And would you believe that Manchester United went and sacked their manager before they face us? Typical bloody fashion. Super Kev, I hand reckon, it over to you. Do you reckon, so that they will have a interim manager in before we face them. So the rumour mill and from a couple, they want Sources. Pochettino. No, yeah, that's who they want apparently. But Pochettino ain't coming in until the end of the season, if it ever happens. According to reports, he's ready to go now. He's not having a happy time at PSG. His family is still in London. A little bit like Rafa, when he went off to manage, his family stayed in the north of England. Um, I can't imagine managing Neymar and Mbappe and Messi and all those egos is easy. And it might be boring for him. In the Champions League, it might be exciting. And sorry, Chris, Pirate Chris, I say this with respect, but that's the job he's always wanted. And apparently Sir Alex Ferguson is reverting back to that's who he wants. Well, watch this space then, so But if you're if you're PSG, hmm. they're going to have to pay them a lot of money, which the Glazers could write that check, but they're too you know stingy to do that. And you know what? It's not about leaving Messi, Mbappe, and Neymar to go to McFred. Manchester United Football Club is. Massive. It's the biggest club in the world. You can say anything you want. Real Madrid, Barcelona, yes. Bayern Munich. But when it comes to football, I mean, it's Real Madrid, Man United, Barcelona, because Cruyff and Messi made that happen. Of course, they're huge. They're massive. But I'm sorry. If ESPN come and offer me a job right now, I'm taking it. Aren't you, Kev? If ESPN offer me a job. I mean, you know, if when you're at Everton, if Real Madrid came in, you're going to Real Madrid. Are you not? Depends. Oh, that's a whole other show now. We can't. We don't have time for that. No, but it, but it depends, Solf. It, ju it does depend. Okay, managing PSG, managing Manchester United. I don't care if it's Messi, Mbappe and Neymar. They couldn't even win the Champions League last year they did they didn't even win Liga yeah but Messi weren't there that's why he's been brought in it's not exactly lighting the PSG world on fire right now is he? he's yeah, been but injured with, yeah but there's they he's done all right in the Champions League he, they, he's there to win the Champions League you know you know what you know what I would never leave the Highbury squad I'd just take the job at ESPN armchair support no, don't you start <laughs> going back on that one Sophie Never ever would I leave the Highbury squad. Um, he he would be given the keys to the kingdom at Man United the same way he was at Tottenham. He's not the Don at PSG. He's like the fourth Don. There's Don Mbappe, there's Don Messi, there's Don Neymar, and then there's Don Pochettino. If I was Conte's agent, I would have put in a call this weekend and said, hey, hello, it's Antonio Conte's agent here. Um, can you get us out of this Tottenham contract? We are very interested to come to Manchester United. <laughs> but he's only got he's only got eighteen months off. So he can take over from whoever fails at Manchester United. So, you know? <laughs> so if you think about it, I I I truly believe there might be a, a changing of the guard across down the road at the end of the season. Why, why would it be interim until the end of the season, they say? There's saying? 26 games to go, Kev. Like, what is this nonsense about? They're still in the Champions League. They're still in with the shout of getting a Champions League spot. It's not over yet. There's a long... We're not even to December. And they're talking about writing off the season by Car with Carrick? No. Ten Hag's not going to leave. Pochettino he, might. He's he the one. I don't think Pochettino's going anywhere. Not yet. End of the season, maybe. But there's still because he wanna he wanna finish the season right. 
he might want to leave, yeah, but he won't he won't want to do that because they can make life so much more difficult for him because they don't have to do any deal with Man United, PSG. They don't need the money. So, you know, it's going to be a difficult one, Soph, I tell you. <laughs> it's going to be a difficult one. It's Conte's eight. That, was that that bad? Was my Italian accent that bad? Oh, don't start this lot off on Indian stuff, Future Shock. Last oh, time that God. happened, the entire, entire chat box got yellow carded. Right. Kingdom is the Lannisters. That's a bit effed up too, isn't mm. it? It's Sophie time. I'm out of time. It's Kev's time now. We'll be back tomorrow. That's it from me. Right. Sophie, thanks. Some very good questions. There were six questions, obviously with one <laughs> bonus, which you're always good at. Um, squaddies, thanks for joining us and uh, appreciate you, you coming in. If you haven't hit the like button on the way in, please nut it, touch it, caress it, and just make sure it registers on the way out. Vinny usually sh shows you what to do. Are we going to get Vinny one more time, Soph? The crowd are asking for it, Kev. They're asking for it. Go on, Vinny. It, 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 it. Smash it. Like it on the way out. And you squaddies, you look after yourself. And thanks again for joining us. And we are going to see you for a terrific Tuesday. Squaddies, I'm out. Sophie's out. And that is everyone. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. <laughs>